Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss itemized deductions that goes on Schedule A and specifically we're going to be focusing on the taxes. Just to review, itemized deductions are deductions from adjusted gross income. What does that mean? It means on your Form 1040, on your tax return, there's a line called adjusted gross income and those deduction comes after your adjusted gross income, not before, not for AGI, from AGI. Itemized deductions include non-trade business expenses. They're usually personal in nature. They could include employee, some expenses you incur as an employee or, an, or as investment expenses. And these deductions, they only make sense or they are only useful, not make sense, they are only useful if they are greater than your standard deduction. So if your itemized deduction ID is greater than your standard deduction, then they are useful, then you can benefit from them. Why? Because this deduction is given by the government and it's given every year based on your filing status. For example, merit filing jointly. For example, um, this is not a number because it changes every year. Let's assume merit filing jointly is 30,000. Just This is not true. I'm just making up this number. You add up all of your itemized deduction. And if they are greater than 30, you would use your itemized deduction. If they're not, then you would use your standard deduction. And those itemized deduction would include medical and dental expenses, which we already covered, taxes paid, which we'll discuss in this session, interest paid on mortgage and investments, we'll discuss in the next session, the following session, charitable contribution and miscellaneous expenses, which we already discussed in various sessions. And as a reminder, those miscellaneous expenses are suspended between the year 2018 and the year 2025. And this is what Schedule A would look like. This is the medical and dental expenses. We already covered this session. In this session, we focus on taxes paid, such as state and local taxes, state, state and local taxes or general taxes, which we'll talk about with this in a moment, state and local real estate taxes, state and local personal property taxes, and you could have other taxes. So those are the ones that are deductible, but don't worry, we're going to look at each one of them separately and learn about the rules. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the first thing we want to know is, we kind of understand, why do they give you a deduction for taxes? It doesn't make any sense. If I'm paying my taxes, why are they giving me deduction for other taxes? Well, here's what the federal government says. Since you already got paid that money, let's assume $10,000. Well, first, the federal government's going to take their share, then the state, then the local and we have other taxes we have fica social security fica medicare and we have other taxes when it comes to the state and local taxes what the federal government is saying since you are paying taxes multiple times on the same amount of money we're going to give you a deduction for the state and for the local so because it's affecting your ability to pay your taxes because you're receiving less money because the state and the local government is also taking their chunk of money therefore we're gonna give you a break we're gonna we're gonna let you deduct those you may or may not be able to deduct them but we're gonna allow you to do so so state local foreign income taxes and real property taxes real property tax means simply put you have a home are deductible in the year paid now when it comes to real property taxes which we'll talk about this later special assessment taxes assessed for local benefits which we'll see that that's not included and we'll give you an example later Okay, actually, here's an example. For example, special assessments for streets, sidewalks, curbing, and other similar improvement. What happens sometimes is this. For example, your property taxes, your real property taxes is $8,000. Then the city fixes the sidewalk. And for that year, they will add $1,000. They call it special assessment. Well, this one additional $1,000, because it's for the special assessment, not deductible. State and local property taxes. Personal. Notice not real. Real is real property. Personal, as long as that tax is based on value. It has to be tax and based on value. It's called ad valorem, are deductible in the year paid. 
Other taxes would include FICA, excise taxes. Those are not deductible unless we are dealing with FICA and it's for a business or production of activity. That's different. Anything, anything that says fees, fees are not taxes and fees are not deductible. For example, in certain state, you pay a fee for having a car. That's not deductible. In certain state, you pay a tax based on the value of your car. That's deductible. And this is a list of what's deductible and what's not. I strongly recommend, if you want to memorize, memorize what's deductible. What's deductible? State and local income taxes or sales or use tax. So you have to choose between the two. We'll talk about this. Real estate property, so property taxes, taxes on your home. Personal property could be deductible as long as that personal property taxes are based on value. In some cities and some states, they do have those taxes and foreign income tax. What's not deductible? So if you know this, I would say, mem if, if I'm going to memorize, I will memorize this section, not this section. Not deductible is federal income taxes. That's a da. If you're paying the taxes, why would I give you a deduction for paying me, right? If you're paying those taxes, Social Security and Medicare, which is FICA, not deductible. Federal excise taxes, not deductible. Custom duties, transfer taxes, anything you says fees. Sales tax on personal item, not deductible. Notice it says personal here. That's different than personal property taxes based on value. Estate taxes, inheritance taxes, gift taxes. Taxes on foreign property. This used to be deductible, no longer deductible. Be careful. The CPA exam loves to teach to test new rules. Let's talk a little bit more about property taxes. Simply property taxes if you own a home in the U.S. for personal use, depending where you live, it could range from 3000 up to some places, depending on how big is your house, up to $50,000 in some houses, like in, in Beverly Hills, California, right? Now, if you have a property that's used for business, then those property taxes will be on Schedule C. Now, if your property is rental, it will be on Schedule E. As we mentioned, special assessment, not deductible, like if they fix the sidewalk and increase the property tax by 500, that's not deductible. What you have to be careful is when the property is sold. The real taxes for that year should be split between the seller and the buyer. If that's not done right, if it's not split, adjustment must be made to the seller's profit and the buyer cost basis. So if you don't split the taxes appropriately, then the deduct then you have to adjust the uh, the, the seller and the buyer. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. Now, I'm going to mention this. I should not mention this, but I should. I heard, again, I heard that this could be, you know, it could appear on the CPA exam in a form of simulation. Now, this, this, is, this is a straightforward exercise. I have everything for you. But what they do on the CPA exam, they might give you the closing paper. And they may show you, they, they don't tell you how much was the home was sold, you have to see. They don't tell you what the total taxes are. They might show you bills from the county. So don't panic. Just take a look and let's see how we would approach this problem. Stephanie sold her house, her beach house to Jason on March 15 for half a million. Before the sale, Stephanie paid the real estate taxes of $5,000 for the calendar year. So here's the whole, the full year. The full year, you have to pay $5,000 in taxes. What Stephanie did, she paid that tax early on in the year, and some people do that, but she happened to sell her house on March 15. Now, for income tax purposes, who, who gets the deduction? Does Stephanie, can Stephanie deduct the full 5,000? And the answer is no. What Stephanie has to do is the following. This is what, what's gonna happen. Stephanie will have to figure out how much of the 5,000 she is responsible for, and this is how we do it. We would say she owned the house in January, 31 days, February, 28 days, assume it's an, not, an, not a leap year, and March, 15. All in all, 74 days. We're gonna take 74 divided by 365, and that's gonna give us $1,014. So her share is $1,014 only. And what is Jason's share? Jason's share, which kind of, she paid that on his behalf, 3,986. So what's the basis for Jason? Well, Jason paid half a million. Yes, Jason paid half a million. Yes, indeed. But included in that half a million, the assumption is it's a prepaid taxes by Stephanie, 3,986. Therefore, we're gonna take half a million minus 3,986 and it's his basis is $496,014. Now, what's the proceeds? What's the proceeds for Stephanie? 
Well, Stephanie received half a million dollars. That's how much she received. But included in that half a million dollars, the assumption is Jason included in that half a million took into account that she paid 3,986. Therefore, she have to deduct her proceeds 3,986. 3, Therefore, her proceeds is 496 and 14 dollars. Now, we have to keep in mind, if let's assume Stephanie sold the beach, uh, the, the property to Jason, and it's the opposite. Jason paid the real property, then we would have to add the difference. Then we have to add. What I'm going to do in a separate recording, I will work a simulation and as an example, because again, I believe this topic is important. Let's take a look at state versus local and use tax. Well, I told you that's deductible, but you have to choose between either the state and local income tax or sales and use tax. For the state and local income taxes, let's assume we are dealing with year X2, you have to understand anything that you pay in year X2 is deductible. So if you are working, you might have a W2 for year X2, and that W2 will have withheld amount. That's the, that's deductible. Also, for, X, for year X2, let's assume you are, again, this is X2, this is the year that we are working with. You might pay in year X2, you might make some payments for year X3. So in X2, for example, you might prepay some taxes for year X3. That's also deductible in X2. And also in year X2, you might pay for taxes you owe for year X1. As long as you pay it in year X2, you add up everything in year X2. So simply put, sales and use tax is deductible in the year paid it doesn't matter for it does not matter for which year it's when you pay it it's the year during the year that you pay it now for sales use tax you can either deduct the actual sales what does what sales and use tax sales and sales tax is when you buy stuff from the store and you pay a sales tax use tax is when you buy property from another state for example i live in pennsylvania okay i live in pennsylvania and next to me is Delaware, okay? Now in Delaware, there's no sales tax. Many people, what they do, they go from Pennsylvania to Delaware, they buy cars, they buy you know, smart TVs, they buy computers. I know people from New York, they, they buy the computer and they ship it to Delaware, to Apple store. Therefore, it's as considered as purchase in Apple, then they ask the Apple store to ship it. Why? Because there's no sales tax in Delaware. So what happened is this, the law is this, if you purchased something from another state, for example, if I, let's assume I purchased a car from Delaware and I paid for it $20,000. I drove it to Pennsylvania and I did not pay any sales tax because I bought it in Delaware. At the end of the year, I have to tell the state I'm responsible for 6%, that's called the use tax. So sales or use tax, you have to keep track of either or. Or, or the IRS, they have a table and based on your income, you could choose that number, okay? Now, what you can do if you purchase motor vehicle, boats, and large items, you can add them to that number from the IRS. All what you have to know is this. Most people, you, if they're going to be doing anything, it's state and local income, unless you are, purchase, you are making large purchases and you're keeping track of it, okay? Now, bear in mind, all in all, there's a limit on deducting taxes. The limit is $10,000 for, ma for married filing jointly and 5,000 for filing separately. Uh, this provision is made based on the tax from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, a policy administered by the Trump administration. Now, why did they do that? To simplify the process. What they did is they limited your tax deduction to 10,000. That's it. However, they increased, they increased the standard deduction. So rather than keeping track of all these taxes, they would say, we're going to make it easy for you. That's one, that's one understanding of it. The other understanding is this. It was to penalize certain state. Who are those certain state? The democratic states. For example, New Jersey, New York, where the property taxes are high. Property taxes are high. So if you own a home, you pay a lot of taxes. So they're saying President Trump is trying to penalize those states because now they'll pay their taxes and they don't get a deduction because the maximum you can deduct is how much? 10000 Okay, so here, simply put, you can deduct 10,000. They limit you. Now, we did cover medical and dental expenses on Schedule A. In this session, we covered taxes you paid. And guess what? You know it. In the next session, I'm going to cover interest paid 
Now, what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs, multiple choice questions. That's going to help you understand this topic better. This is how you know that you know it, is you practice. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.